Hey guys, this is Austin with Mojave Repeater. Today we're gonna to be talking about the packing list for our RTO Basics comms class. So the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to the RTO Basics class is, I realize there's a lot of stuff on here, out on this table, and it might be a little bit overwhelming, but the RTO Basics class is a very, very low barrier to entry to get into. Uh, if you have had any interest in comms recently, you more than likely already own everything you need in order to get started taking that class. And if not, the, the packing list that you need to take the class is, is pretty minimal. Now, there are some extras that we're going to get into to talk about that I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy, but if you already have it, we want to encourage you to bring it. The, the intangible that I wanted to talk about is a good attitude when you come take a class, right? And that's not just our class, that's any class that you pay good money for. It's real easy to go into a class that's in a subject that you're already interested in and assume you're gonna know most of the content. I know that was the mistake I made the first time I took RTO Basics. You don't know what you don't know, right? And you're more than likely gonna take away a lot more if you remind yourself that you have uh, a lot of knowledge to gain if you just keep an open mind. Let's get into the actual equipment. First and foremost is the Baofeng UV5R. We know that this is, by and large, not the, uh, the most robust or complicated piece of equipment. In fact, we sell much more advanced uh, handheld transceivers on our website. But you really don't need a super advanced radio to take RTO Basics. RTO Basics is going to cover the science behind how all radios work, from this to a Motorola APX7K to a uh, Harris 152 radio. They all operate the same way as far as how they interact with the physical world around us. So you don't need a super complicated radio to take RTO basics. Even though the UV5R is certainly, in a lot of ways, not the most durable radio, you can get a lot of training value out of it. Certainly a lot more training value uh, than with a lot of other uh, tactical pieces of gear. Uh, just as an example, this uh, UV5R, it has been through, I want to say about six Mojave classes at this point, uh, and a few other classes that I've taken. And it was 30 bucks, you know, and you, you divide that $30 out amongst six classes that it's managed to survive. I've gotten a lot of training value out of it, right? So we do encourage people to have much more robust, much uh, more durable radios. But as far as the learning opportunity you get with these radios, uh, it, it really is a, a great bargain. So that's the big thing I want to talk about. You're also probably noticing that I have a, a little bit of a longer antenna. Uh, one of the best investments you can make if you're going to use the UV5R for a learning platform is a better antenna. Generally, if there's anything about them that's not the greatest, it's their antennas. So this is a Nagoya NA771. And we talk a little bit about antenna theory in the class as well. You don't have to show up with a, a nice antenna for it. Uh, but if you have one, you're more than welcome to bring it. You may get some benefit out of that. We've had some students uh, experience an inability to make a comm shot with a rubber ducky but uh, make a comp shot with the, the 771. The other real basic piece of equipment that we're gonna recommend generally, just because we do go over some online tools that you can use when you take the class, and you're going to get a lot of capability out of being able to use programs like CalTOPO. Uh, we go through programming these radios, not just by hand, but also using a computer. So that's gonna be one of the required items that, uh, that you're gonna wanna bring. An extra battery or even a charger, uh, depending on how much time you're actually spending keying up and using your radios or your radio goes bad. It's just good to have a spare. And then programming cables. Uh, it never fails that uh, a student shows up and they either forgot to bring a programming cable or uh, just doesn't work or for whatever reason we can't find the right driver. So a good programming cable, uh, and if you can, if you do have the ability to, to kind of self-guide and figure it out yourself, maybe giving it a function check, making sure you can read and write through Chirp with it as well, just so that way uh, you can show up and you have good equipment. We've had students help each other out, guys pass around a, a good functioning cable, but it's nice to have a good one for yourself as well. Other item I wanted to talk about is some form of a GPS. It's not necessarily a, a land nav class, but we do spend time in the field uh, and we like to record where we can and cannot make comm shots. And having some type of GPS uh, is gonna be really, really useful for you to be able to record coordinates or load up maps that we generate in CalTOPO. Uh, it's really useful. Again, this is not a required item. This is a very expensive GPS and you don't have to have this, but if you have it lying around, uh, feel free to bring it. You're probably gonna get some value out of that. 
kind of stepping down from that is a cell phone. Uh, I know basically everyone has a cell phone, but uh, you can run CalTOPO and some of the other tools that we use in the class on your phone. And most phones these days have a GPS in them. So if you need to pull GPS coordinates, your phone generally works just fine too. So getting into this bag of radios, I know I mentioned you don't have to have an advanced radio to take RTO Basics, but you're not discouraged from bringing them as well. A big thing about RTO Basics is there's a lot of autonomy given to students to be able to use uh, different comm systems. We don't cover DMR radios specifically. We don't go over programming them or the way that infrastructure works. We don't cover P25. But if you already have comm systems set up for that, you're more than welcome to bring them. Students get a lot of autonomy to develop out their, their comms plans and implement different systems. And so we like seeing students show up with different options. We've had students not just show up with DMR radios, but we've also had uh, Gotennas, Meshtastics, some unconventional comm systems. They've all shown up to RTO Basics classes, and we've seen students use them as part of making their, their comms plan and their pace plan robust uh, and versatile in what types of data can be exchanged when they, they do the field exercise. So that's just another thing I want to bring up. I probably should have gone over these items uh, a lot sooner, but I'm going to hit on them now. Uh, water, we do have, again, uh, a classroom day and a practical day. We recommend you bring plenty of drinking water. We want you to stay hydrated. And then ways to take notes. Uh, this isn't just important for the classroom section where you are potentially learning uh, the curriculum, but also being able to take notes when you're out in the field. Again, we jot down notes uh, like salute reports, locations, um, little notes that we're trying to pass along back and forth between different students making comm shots and being able to real quickly just take out a pen and paper and jot down a note is, uh, it's basically required for this class. So just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, another thing that can be handy is manuals for any types of equipment that you're bringing. The male brain, for whatever reason, likes to throw these away. Uh, but it's good to just toss these in whatever comms bag that you have that you're bringing, just so that way you can potentially reference it later. A lot of these menus, their acronyms are not really intuitive with what the settings are. And if you can't get to your, uh, your Windows device to do any type of advanced programming, at least being able to reference the manual if you're trying to tweak a, a little bit more obscure setting, is uh, it's really useful. So manuals are good to have. Another one of those, not required, but if you bring it, uh, cool. We have seen students use uh, Yagi directional antennas. This is great, especially if you're in a real vegetated area and you need to defeat that vegetation or maybe you're in terrain that doesn't lend itself super well to making comm shots. We've seen students actually uh, employ a Yagi to be able to make a comm shot where it was otherwise uh, much more difficult with like an omnidirectional antenna. So if you have a Yagi and you're on the fence about bringing it, you're more than welcome to bring it. This is a tool that we see uh, gets used a lot when troubleshooting comms. Oftentimes we've seen a Yagi employed and actually able to, to finish making a successful comm shot. This is something we get asked about sometimes too. Uh, if guys have to have a uh, lunchbox repeater in order to take the class, you don't. We provide one for the class. Uh, we do employ one. It's a, uh, it's a really, really cool system. It's part of the curriculum and the, the practical application that we do with RTO Basics. It's not required um, for you to bring one because we provide one. All right, we're gonna get into something that is very near and dear to our hearts at Mojave Repeater, which is training with your kit on. Now, the RTO Basics class is very agnostic in terms of the content you get out of it uh, and who's able to employ the principles that you get from the curriculum. We've had search and rescue, uh, infrastructure, municipalities all take RTO Basics and all benefit out of it. But we are well aware that the uh, firearms and tactical community makes up a big portion of our demographic. And I see it a lot. Guys show up to RTO Basics and they bring their kit, the kit that they want to train in, the kit that they wear on the flat range or the kit they wear when they go out rucking. And they show up with it. And for whatever reason, they don't want to be the only guy wearing their kit. They feel like they're going to be, uh, you know, the one LARPer. And I want to tell you guys, wear your kit. You are paying money to be out here. You are spending time out in the field. And that is an opportunity to get in reps with your gear. I wear a kit, even when I'm the instructor, uh, we always encourage our students to wear whatever kit they wanna train in. You are more than welcome to wear your chest rack, your helmet, your ops core amps. If you are using some type of 
PTT, like this awesome Disco 32 one, you're more than welcome to rock it. Uh, another big benefit about wearing your kit when you go out into the field is you figure out what works for you and what doesn't, or maybe some misconceptions you have about the way you set up your equipment. Maybe you realize that you need to access your radio or your GPS a lot more often than you initially thought, and that's not something you really figure out when you just put gear on and you size it for you uh, within 10 minutes at your house. So please feel encouraged to wear your kit. You are more than welcome to bring kit. You're more than welcome to train with it on and uh, come out and have a good time and get in reps with your gear. This is something I keep in my uh, comms case that again is not a required item. It is something that we sell on our website. This is our Thule's handbook. It's a lot of reference information on the science behind radios uh, as well as some other just uh, great pieces of reference. It, what it does is it alleviates a lot of burden of having to memorize a lot of information, but information you might have to actually access still if you're employing radios. So not required, but it is something that you can have. So what can students expect to learn when they take RTO basics? We cover uh, quite a bit of information in our curriculum. It's over the course of two days. First day is spent in the classroom, and then the second day is spent in the field during a practical exercise. Now, what we go over on that first day is, first and foremost, we go over radio theory and radio wave properties. We go over how these radios interact with the physical world. We go over how the radio waves propagate and how they are going to interact with other materials in space, right? We go over how modulation actually works, the different ways these devices actually manipulate those radio waves and how it's interpreted by other radios on the receiving end. Some of the other content we go over is going to include radio programming, right? We know that's a big question that we get right now is what uh, should I be programming into my radio? How do I access different databases on good radio frequencies to be storing in my different radios? That's another big question we get a lot. We go over how to uh, not just program them by hand, but also using uh, a computer, a Windows machine. So those are gonna be some big items that we go over Another thing that we go over in that class is making you a asset to the development of the comms plans within your team. We get a lot of students from military, law enforcement, uh, different municipalities like search and rescue we've had as students. Uh, and obviously we also get a lot of concerned citizens who just want to develop themselves to be an asset to the group of people they train with, their local community, uh, America as a, uh, as a country. Some other things we go over is actually the tools that exist to research whether or not a comm shot is possible in a specific environment. We get asked all the time what the range is on some specific radio models that we offer. And that's not an easy question to answer. And we go over the reasons why and how to actually find those answers for yourself with your own specific environments and terrain that you deal with wherever you live. Some other things that we go over is we actually go over a little bit of operations planning and conditions-based planning. So not just how to use the radio and how the radio works, but when to not use the radio, right? And when we can actually take advantage of other environmental fa factors that don't require us to key up if it's not necessary. And then the culmination, the biggest thing we do with the RTO Basics class is the field exercise. So we take all of the principles, everything we learn, and we actually put it to use, right? We give you, as the instructors, a scenario that you have to work around. If you get out into a field and you have planned a shot correctly, you're gonna be able to make comms, you're gonna be able to use standardized reporting to pass along information to fellow students. Uh, and if you can't make comms, you get given the information to start troubleshooting, right? Start looking for the answers as to why comms aren't happening or maybe why they're difficult and how you need to augment and flex your, your situation in order to complete that assessment. The last thing I want to say is that we hear it a lot and it's a phrase we really try to discourage in RTO Basics. Radios are not magic, right? They are bound by the laws of physics just like everything else. Now, a lot about these can seem alien and can seem strange, and it's our job, and what we do with RTO Basics is we make these easy to understand so that way you can troubleshoot in the field, you know how to isolate problems, and you know how to make the most of them. And ultimately, not just this radio or whatever radio you show up with, but any radio. 
Well, hey guys, I hope this video has been beneficial for you. I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of it. Again, don't feel like you have to show up with all this stuff. The big focus with RTO Basics is not on the gear itself, but on the principles of how a radio works and developing you to be an asset to your community. This is not about the gear. This is about your capabilities as the communicator. And we are so excited to have you as students. Thank you guys so much and have a good day.